ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the latest gaming news with your host, V Gaming Junkie. The Draw signed an exclusivity deal with major cable news networks, so there's nothing but pure gaming related meatiness. It is all about that electronic good stuff as we dive deep into all that's new in the various interactive virtual worlds. Starting us out with, Multiverse has made an update to one of its characters' moves that was considered controversial. Specifically, Velma had the ability to call the police on someone and I guess stun them for a takedown if she collects enough evidence on them. Yeah, people had a problem with that given the attitude towards the police lately. Making matters worse, LeBron James is a character in the game and I guess you can kinda see where I'm going with this. Even though the obvious gag is that the perp is Old Man Jenkins who doesn't fit the racial profile they're objecting to here, it was still considered heated enough to be changed. Now instead, Velma calls the mystery machine on them. I guess in a way that's not too bad since it's still thematically appropriate. It's still kind of ridiculous in my opinion that the change even needed to be made in the first place. It's not like LeBron James was even singled out here, she could use it against literally all the characters. I guess we're going so far in the opposite direction now that even the possibility of someone who is black being arrested alongside plenty who are white is a problem. Honestly, that alone has some weird implications in my opinion. Like I said, it's not the worst change in the world, but the fact that people complained about it enough to necessitate a change is still kind of silly to me. So PlayStation's Jim Ryan isn't very happy about Microsoft's Call of Duty deal with Sony. Phil Spencer promised several more years to release Call of Duty to PlayStation, which Jim points out turns out to be three more years. Jim Ryan believes it's unreasonable to possibly make it Xbox and PC only after three years when Call of Duty has been on PlayStation for almost 20 years. While I'm not really a fan of exclusive titles because games should be for as many people as possible because the hardware should mostly stand on its own merits, this seems like a weak argument to me. If Microsoft buys Activision out, then they own Call of Duty and it becomes up to them to decide what to do with it. Anti-competition laws also seem really silly, like Call of Duty is the only player in town. Even within the very specific realm of war shooters, there's also EA's Battlefield and others that probably aren't going to stop going to PlayStation anytime soon. Just because Call of Duty is the more popular one, that doesn't matter to exclusivity. That would kind of be like saying Nintendo can't make Pokemon or Mario exclusive to them. If Sony's smart, maybe they'll actually try to work out a deal with Microsoft. Call me crazy, but I doubt just trying to shame them and mock them in interviews is going to help. And so rising costs are scaring Square Enix out of completely owning game studios. That's probably for the best, it's complicated enough with the big three console manufacturers owning studios. The president of the company, Yosuke, has said they're looking into quote, joint ventures, equity method affiliates, and minority stakes. The problem with owning game studios completely is that the more cost you put into a game's development, the more riskier it actually is. As you can see throughout the game industry, more risk tends to cause them to turtle down and make the same games over and over again, especially if they have stockholders. When there's that much of an investment, any floppers will be devastating. Yosuke has mentioned putting an emphasis on greater flexibility, which I can completely understand. The less investment there is in each game made, the more risks you can afford to make without worrying about it taking the company down with it if things don't work out. Making smaller projects that focus less on graphical fidelity and marketing and more on just taking risks with bold new ideas would be great. After all, if Minecraft can become the most popular game in the world while in some ways looking less graphically complex than the original Quake, I don't think we have to worry about that. Just make a fun new game with fun new ideas or combinations of ideas and the rest takes care of itself. I'm probably going off into a bit of a ramble here, so I'm just going to say Godspeed Square Enix, I hope it works out for you. So Nintendo had their Direct recently, so I guess I'll give my thoughts on that. Ahem, Metroid Prime 4 isn't in it, so it's terrible. 0 out of 10, the end. Obviously I'm joking, while I would love to have information on Metroid Prime 4, there's still plenty of noteworthy news here to dissect. For starters, Breath of the Wild sequel is getting an official name and it won't be Breath of the Wild 2. Rather, it's going to be called The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's an interesting name for the title, it even kind of makes me think of Hollow Knight City of Tears. The actual trailer is pretty interesting too, showcasing sky islands akin to Skyward Sword and even a sort of robotic bird. Pikmin 4 and Fire Emblem Engage were also announced. I haven't really played much of either franchise, but I did have fun with Pikmin and plan to get back into that at some point. Then there's plenty of other interesting little things like Fatal Frame, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, and Bayonetta 3 that while not as interesting to me still have my attention. Resident Evil Village is also coming to Switch, over the cloud, so like 7. Personally I think that's kind of lazy and it only ensures that it's not going to remain playable on the Switch forever. Zelda's the main highlight here, although there's another bombshell dropping and it deserves its own news story. 
And that story is that GoldenEye 64 is releasing for both Nintendo Switch and Xbox. The one game that I thought was going to be in copyright limbo for freaking ever is finally being let out of the underground vault it's been in. The beta of a remaster for Xbox 360, which by the way I'm going to have a let's play of on this channel on the 19th, was actually leaked recently. Supposedly Nintendo turned that down and refused to make any deals. It seems this time Nintendo is finally willing to make a deal. The compromise is that only the Switch version will actually come with online multiplayer. My guess is that Microsoft is happy to have it at all, and it will obviously still come with local multiplayer. Activision technically owns the James Bond license for video games, but it's funny how Microsoft buying Activision might actually help to solve that. It was mostly Nintendo that prevented it in the past. Well, this is good news to anyone with a Nintendo Switch and or Xbox Series X who really wants to pay respect to one of the biggest milestones in first-person shooters. Or, you know, at least on game consoles, it was one of the first big ones that wasn't just a port of Doom or something. I guess all I gotta say to you is enjoy your martini, shaken not stirred. In other news, Hideo Kojima seems to be teasing a new project of some kind. He tweeted an image of what looks like a woman's face obscured by shadow but with visibly blonde hair. Someone on Twitter suspects it to be an image of Elle Fanning, an American actress who's had a few roles over the years like May from the English version of My Neighbor Totoro. Looking at it myself, it definitely seems to be a perfect match for her, suggesting Hideo Kojima is going to be doing a project that involves her in some way. Assuming he didn't just make a Guess Who I Am game for the fun of it anyway. Although there have been a few interesting things around Hideo Kojima lately. It was revealed that he's going to be working on a Death Stranding 2 and also a game for Xbox. There was even a supposed leak that claims a horror game named Overdose is in the works. In some ways, Death Stranding can be said to have some thematic parallels to Metal Gear Solid, so it makes sense that this game, if true, would be more akin to Silent Hill. After all, those two franchises are what Kojima's best known for. Igarashi proved that you can have a pretty identical spiritual successor to a game Konami owns and get away with it, but it seems Kojima's looking to make his games a bit more unique from his previous franchises. One thing's for sure, anything Kojima comes up with is sure to be insanely ambitious if his track record is anything to go on. So here's a fun little lighthearted news story for you. A fan of Fallout 3 actually cooked up a little scavenger hunt. Inspired by the game's bobbleheads, real world equivalents were 3D printed and placed in 20 locations all over Washington, D.C. Apparently they're based off their actual video game locations, so that should give you a pretty big clue of where to look. That's assuming all 20 of them haven't been found already, of course, considering there's only 20 of them and the internet tends to work fast on things like this. After all, everybody's supersonic racing, gotta keep your feet right on the ground. Sadly, the bobbleheads won't be giving you a boost to your skills like they will in the game. I guess that critically needed charisma and intelligence boost will have to wait another day, huh? Oh well, I'm sure I'll do just them without fine. Big ups to this Redditor for a very creative use of Fallout 3's Washington, D.C. I have no idea how his Reddit name is supposed to be pronounced, but he refers to himself as that guy with a gay boy camera, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go with that. And finally, this news story is a bit on the older side, but one I feel I should mention regardless. One very dedicated modder named Chilo took the time and is still taking the time to remake a ton of Doom's graphics to voxels. Thankfully, unlike one that I tried in the past, this one is hardware accelerated. One neat thing though is that you can choose software rendering where the voxels are basically billboard sprites instead of cubes. Now it doesn't cover absolutely everything, especially from Doom 2 as of yet. Barons are made though, so Hell Knights probably aren't that far behind. Interestingly, Revenants have one still frame so far, so you can get a direct comparison as they blink through the two. This isn't me complaining, of course, because what's here is still very impressive. Chilo even made a video of the process of making the Archvile voxel, and it's nothing short of breathtaking. The fact that it actually runs really well is just the icing on the cake, and it will be even more satisfying when it's finished. Even as it is right now, I would still easily place it next to Beautiful Doom as the best visual enhancers for Classic Doom's graphics, and I highly recommend checking it out. And as always, straight out of the oven of Games Radar, it's time for the latest batch of release dates. The 19th has returned to Monkey Island for PC and Switch, while the 20th begins with Construction Simulator for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. It rounds out with Hard Space Shipbreaker for PS5 and Series X, as well as Solstice for the same in PC. The 22nd begins with Dio Field Chronicle, Potion Permit, and Serial Cleaners for the six major platforms. We've got an update, ladies and gentlemen. Gundam Evolution for PC has since been added to the 22nd. It tops off with Session Skate Sim for PlayStation and Xbox, Slime Rancher for PC and Series X, as well as Train Life, a railway simulator for PlayStation and Xbox. 
Finally, the 23rd has DreamWorks Dragon's Legends of the Nine Realms for the six major platforms. This week's epic freebie until next Thursday is, as you probably guessed by now, another two-for-one special. The first is Spirit of the North, an adventure game starring a red fox. The second is The Captain, a point-and-click adventure that seems to emphasize choices. Maybe while I'm here, I should mention a few noteworthy things you can get for free this month if you have Amazon Prime. They are Assassin's Creed Origins, Football Manager 2022, and Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. There are others too, but these are the big ones. And that concludes the news broadcast as always. I hope you found it entertaining and informative. If you good people want more content, I let's play every single day at high noon, live stream Mondays and Thursdays unless otherwise specified at 4.30pm, and I do news videos like this one every Friday at 6pm. All in Eastern Standard Time, of course. If you're a real junkie for all things gaming like I am, then feel free to hit that subscribe and bell icon to get your next fix. A like and a comment are always appreciated for that engagement, but I just hope you genuinely enjoyed yourself, and that is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Spread this video around like voxeled fire, and I'll see you next time. Capitalize on life, peace out, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.